G'day, Dave here from the Hunters Club. I'm um, with uh, Andre and Sam, two of my uh, colleagues. Um, been asked a few questions from the team of the captain, so yeah, we're going to answer them. I'd say the Hunters Club is uh, a showcase of New Zealand outdoors venture sport, mostly in the hunting um, genre. It's but the it's... best damn show in town, that's what it is, that's what the Hunters Club is. <laughs> Well, uh, I went on a hunt and realised no one was documenting hunting uh, the way that these guys actually do do it. So yeah, rolled camera and made a pilot and here we are, 70 episodes in. Whereas the Spiro, uh, yeah, we're into our second season, so early days, but making waves. And I just turned up with a rifle and a bow. Well, it's uh, kind of like the Hunters Club in a way, you know, just a bunch of mates who are fortunate enough to get dragged around the country and the world, showcasing the underwater world and the sport of spearfishing, yeah. which is a, a rapidly growing sport. And yeah, I mean, so it's nice to be able to document the sport uh, the way that these guys. Hell of a um, squad too. Try it. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, real, real good divers. And we're lucky here in New Zealand that you know COVID's kept us locked in for season two on New Zealand shores, and we're yeah, super lucky that. You know, all around the country here, we've got some world-class diving that we're stoked to be able to showcase. Same with hunting for an A, not, not a bad place to be uh, stuck in this corner of the world, eh? We've got amazing hunting and fishing and diving opportunities here, so. I know it's a question, we get asked get... a lot. I want, to, I want to be part of the team, but you've got to be mates of the boys. For me, like, it's all good and well being a great hunter, but it's the rapport and the camaraderie that counts for the most when you're on the hill. So. Yeah, I guess there's a wider sense in the word club too, but yeah, yeah. the club's a pretty um, tight-knit group of mates, but that extends as far and wide as the all hunters and fishermen around there, I guess, and Spiros, obviously. Yeah, yeah. 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 But that's what makes the show so good, eh? Like, it's not just a bunch of presenters hanging out with each other, they're actually good mates, good banter, and it comes across, and that's one of the probably leading aspects of the yeah. show, which is, makes it as good as what it is. I, I reckon it's the variety. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the sure. fact also that everything's everything's introduced and needs to be managed and so it takes away that whole worry that you have of shooting natives or hunting natives. It's um yeah, there's, we're some, doing there's the some liberties there but also some responsibility on that too I guess. Yeah. But yeah, definitely the variety and the change, the difference in terrain and country that you can hunt, probably the same with the, with the coastline. It's, it's exactly the same with the spearfishing. You can go now down the road and the diving is completely different, the species are different. We're lo super lucky that we've got such an amazing fishery, well managed fishery here in New Zealand. Just this year we've had some pretty epic encounters. We, um, oh, Sammy, what's your highlight from season two of Spiro? Oh, definitely um, season two, we did a South Island road trip, ended up down in Stewart Island, we ended up finding a, a great white. I had a wicked free diving encounter with a great white. It's probably one of the most incredible things I've ever seen, actually. Mm. Uh, it was awesome. Well, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> that was cool. Is that just this? So scary, but so cool. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, yeah. That was me and hey man, I was so scared. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but that was just so epic. Come on, fish, eh? Just the way they're sitting, like, looking at you. Hey. Follow up for me was, oh, actually, that probably outside my normal stuff, but taking that Polaris with the tracks through that gnarly snow country, that was pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's always amazing getting out in the bush. Hunting with it's an awful of South Island for me, so any time in the hills is a good time for me, so more of that. I'd probably say from a nostalgia perspective would be like the Canterbury high country. I just thought spilt a lot of blood, sweat and tears up there, had some great long backpack hunts uh, with good mates and took some great racks out of the hills. Um, so that'd probably be one for me just from a nostalgia perspective, Canterbury high country, the red stag specifically, yep. yeah. If I could go back anywhere tomorrow, probably back at the Three Kings. Yeah, pretty exceptional fishery up there. I mean, the biggest 
yellowtail kingfish in the world up there, and you never know, you never quite know what you're going to see. Like we found an oarfish, a uh, paper nautilus spawning event. Not necessarily the fish you come home with, there's all the extra things you can see up there as well. It's I'd probably say a uh, big red, a big 12 point red that I shot um, with Jamie, uh, I don't know, a long time ago now. But um, that'd be something that I've got in all that. So plenty of uh, memories, and I'd say it was probably my best uh, trophy. Not the biggest, but definitely just the most memorable, I'd say. Game over. For, for me, it'd be probably, uh, didn't put on the scales, but when close to a 40 kilo dog tooth tuna. Um, or my uh, Tongan dog tooth tuna. Tongan dog tooth tuna. Yeah, man. Yeah, boy. You bit cliche. Or a 26 pound snapper that I shot on the snoop at my first nationals. Yeah. To achieve the footage that we want to achieve, we've got to go off the grid. We've got to be in something that can actually get us there and back safely and be relatively comfortable, especially for Dave who's got to film on the platform himself. Um, and they do really live up to their reputation. Like yeah. That was really that, that, that trip around we did with Stuart Island with Tim really solidified that for us. We meant to have one day of rough weather, instead, but the forecast was wrong. We had three days rough as guts. We circumnavigated the entire island and it was so comfortable. We handled it, handled it so well. We ended up, you know, we were confident enough to wait for the roughest stuff to really hammer it through to get some cool footage and really put them through their paces. And um, I'd say the from an engineering perspective too, it's, it's like a classic example of something that's been forged in an environment that that, that's one of your only alternatives and it's sort of one of those things that settle to the top it's like a boat and a hull of that shape and, and, and the way it's been designed it's been an evolution in that kind of country deep south of the south island you're going to get a boat that's rugged safe and uh, you know in the modern day time they're throwing all the technology they can at so I, yeah can handle the rough stuff eh? yeah yeah yes. well, that's a quality magazine the interview only the cream of the crop yeah exactly yeah Oh yeah, I love it. I, I, actually, I've been following them for a long time, but I love the uh, the video sort of journal stuff that, that they do, um, to showcasing just everyday people and, and different, I guess, seafarers that are out there doing yeah. their thing. I, yeah. I really love it, and the some photography. I, right I went for the twenty five hundred Ultra Cab XL based off of the write up in the Captain magazine and the imagery and photos. We even went with the same paint job, so that was a was a good. Um, oh really? Yeah. yeah. Oh true. Right. The big, uh, we've got a big 2500 as well as the, this little guy. So I heard the captain likes putting up photos of naked dudes though. Yeah. <laughs>